everybody. Thanks for uh, coming, tuning into the show. And we are here today with Mike Hawthorne, Vice President here at Veracity Engineering. And we're here to talk about uh, the future of aviation, but more importantly, we're talking about the future of the Air Traffic Control Association and the Board of Directors. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks for taking the time. So, uh, you have been in aviation for a very long time. Well, relatively. Not compared to you, I understand. Sure, sure. um, so, hey, tell us how you got started. Um, very interesting story, actually. Um, I'm in school in Rochester, New York. Freezing cold up there. Love it, but freezing cold. And I needed a co-op job. And a friend of mine told me about this place at the beach in South Jersey. Never heard of it. Called the FAA Technical Center, and all I needed to hear was beach in South Jersey, and I'm good. And uh, so I threw an application and talked to uh, some people down there, and I landed a co-op job. Uh, working with the, at the time, the Airborne Data Link Program. And so while I had friends banging on breadboards and typing in code and data and stuff in labs, I was flying around over the Atlantic on some very cool aircraft testing out avionics for what would ultimately become the Datacom program. And so aviation kind of had me in hello. I got back to school and I clearly won uh, in terms of who had the coolest co-op job. And that's so that's, awesome. that's how I got started and I spent actually the first six years of my career there. Uh, and then I went on a six-month detail to Washington, D.C. that is still going on a few decades later. Um, never went back. That happens. Um, that happens. You come fell, to D.C. Yeah, and never leave. Fell in love with the headquarters <laughs> scene. Uh, got involved with some really neat programs. I uh, worked for another number of years on, on CPDLC, the predecessor to the Datacom program. I uh, worked on ERAM. I worked on SWIM. Um, I was part of the first class of PMPs, actually, that the agency had before, uh, before people really understood what that was. <laughs> uh, my boss at the time did, and, uh, and I threw my hat in. And so we took care of that, and uh, so I worked on some just really, really neat and interesting programs. And, and Veracity, you know, your, your time here, uh, Veracity is doing some work with uh, the Datacom program too, right? So you, um, sure. you've done, you know, what, what where you started is where you are today. That's which, is, which is wonderful, right? So there's, there's a version that goes like, well, you, you can't shake it. And it's like, no, it's actually that cool, right? It's just, <laughs> it's, it's a neat great. program. It's, it's the first program that I sunk my teeth into. It's been in my blood. It was actually the first 10 consecutive years of my career, um, including working for you, sir, um, were about working on variations of the uh, Datacom program. Oh, man. So it's just uh, really, really neat. Uh, um, and then um, right, right around uh, the mid-2000s or so, I got a bug to work on the policy side of things. So I was that hotshot engineer that uh, kept feeling like uh, some really cool technical stuff was kind of not really coming to fruition because of some policy problems. And so I went back and got a master's in public administration and shifted my career over to policy and worked on international and some other things like that. And so it's a very cool experience. Oh, that's it. It's incredibly broad. And yes, that does occur during your the, the long career path in aviation where there's a amount of frustration and you, know, you always try to fix fix those problems. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well that's kind of how my brain works. <laughs> um, and I think it's really smart of you to actually get out of uh, the cold area of central New York at some point. <laughs> um, it, uh, it was there recently and it's it's just it it's is, very cold. It's, it's a wonderful place but it's better yeah. in the spring. It's beautiful when it's beautiful and it's cold when it's not beautiful. Right. So, yes. All right. Um, so now you have also uh, been a volunteer and actively working in in support of the Air Traffic Control Association sure. for a very long time. Can, do you have any uh, memorable experiences about some of the things you've done there? Oh, sure. Uh, the most memorable, actually, is the first time uh, I attended, which was uh, all the way back in 1998 when I wrote about uh, the potential of what would be the Datacom program. And I actually accepted my paper, and they gave me a podium and a microphone, I got to present it, uh, I got to write about it, and so that was, was a really, good paper? It was an outstanding paper. Yeah, okay. um, Still applies today, actually. <laughs> Still <laughs> to, a, to a great okay. extent, right? It's it's just it was it was a very forward-looking uh, paper, and it was just really neat to know there was an an organization like Hatka. I, I wasn't familiar with it until someone said you should write a paper, and I did, and um, I said Hatka has has been at least a part of my uh, work life for the better part of two decades now. Well, I appreciate uh, as a the former board chair mm -hmm. and am still active with the board and the organization. I appreciate 
you know, uh, you're volunteering for uh, the annual and those things, but you know, having resources of people that are interested to help mm -hmm. um, keeps the organization going. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. They have a fantastic staff, but they really rely on the industry to be able to put yeah. things together. So, you're going to take the next step. You're going to uh, run for the board of directors, which has um, some openings come uh, mm -hmm. come the fall for uh, another th three year terms mm -hmm. and. Uh, more reshaping of the board. Um, what are your thoughts? What, what, why you? Um, so, uh, as you as you mentioned, we touched on a little bit earlier. Uh, I've been involved with Adkin one way or the other for about a part of twenty years now. So I've uh, run not only the annual committee, I've run the technical symposium. Those are about the two uh, largest uh, uh, conferences that Adka runs. I've sat on panels. I've moderated panels. I've coordinated panels. Um, I've written. I've been published. I've been an exhibitor uh, on, the, on the private sector here since I jumped out of government now uh, seven years ago. Um, we've done sponsorships. So I have a pretty good understanding of how ATCA works. I have a very good understanding of, of kind of both sides of any conversation for us, which is really government and industry. As I got started with ATCA when I was working for the FAA, and I've been more active with ATCA since I jumped over the industry side. And so I feel like I have a good understanding of how the organization works today. I have a good understanding of, of what's worked and what hasn't worked necessarily in the past. And I have a really, uh, I, I, how would I characterize this? There's so much more that the organization can do given all the goodness that's there today that I jumped at the opportunity given the kind of restructuring of the board uh, and the increase in the number of at-large director positions I jumped at the opportunity to throw my hat in there to see if I could kind of take all that experience with that to the next level and try to bring us into the new uh, world of aviation. Um, so now we, everything's got challenges. Aviation has challenges. Mm -hmm. You've talked about uh, your career, you know, really through a lot of comms work and, mm -hmm. and really pushing a lot of things forward. What do you see are the next set of challenges for aviation? And you know, there, some of them are obvious, but maybe what aren't the obvious ones? Um, so I would, I, whenever we talk about challenges in aviation, I always fall back to there's kind of a, there's kind of a three-piece model that works in my brain, which is also kind of how my career went, right? So there's the technical aspects, and we tend to, our comfort zone uh, for a lot of our industry tends to be the technical side of things. There's, you can always build or invent something that'll solve a problem, uh, and that's how I spent the first good chunk of my career. And then, as I mentioned, I, I saw that some really interesting technical solutions were kind of getting a bit undermined, perhaps, by either bad policy or lack of consideration of policy. Uh, and then, of course, and, and we know just from the time that, that we worked together on things that you can't do either of those two properly without taking into consideration the people side, right? So we spend a lot of time talking about challenges in our industry that are mostly technical. Right? We talk about um, you know, integrating UAS and other new entrants. And we talk about those types of things. We talk about new capabilities and new technologies, artificial intelligence, um, agile development, these kind of things. Uh, we also, um, we tend to talk about uh, maybe bigger picture policy stuff. We've had a running conversation for years, right, about should there be privatization, should there not be privatization, how does the budget process work? Um, neither of those two things are at the top of my list. The number one issue that I see that we have as an industry is the withering of our workforce. So we talked about how long you and I have been doing this. Um, unfortunately, retirement is nowhere close for me. Um, and so uh, I've got some more time left. But a lot of the people that we grew up with in this business have retired or are about to retire. And, and they should feel wonderful about doing so because they're leaving behind an amazing system that's safer than it ever was. It's more accessible than it ever was. And so there's not a wall of people coming in behind. Right? So it's just, it's, it's getting harder and harder. So back when we got started, aviation was, was cool. Right? I'm not the only one that would like walk under an airplane or look up at the sky and think, wow, I, that's kind of neat. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of times I flew before I got to college. Right? So it was, there was a little sense of awe. And um, I like to say there was a sense of cool. Right? But, but we've done such a great job as an industry that I think most American people take aviation for granted at this point. Uh, it's kind of mundane, right? It's, it's no longer, wow, I can't believe I can get to LA in five hours. It's, I can't believe it takes me five hours to get to LA and where's my suitcase, right? And how long am I gonna have to sit on the tarmac, right? So people think about things like that. So they, so they take us for granted and that's a credit to everything that we've done, right? But it also means that we can't compete with Google and Apple 
uh, and Amazon and these other organizations that are very obviously and explicitly high tech. And so I look at the biggest problem that we have as an industry is we need to convince people that aviation is cool. We need to convince people that aviation is high tech and that this is a place where they should come and enjoy and build a career. And I think an organization like ATCA and uh, the members, the very active members, I love the, the activity of the membership of ATCA, can just do so much to help make that happen. ATCA's been doing a lot mm -hmm. in that realm anyway. Look, young aviation professionals have been very actively involved with, uh, and, but I, I think there's more that we can do as a community to kind of get the coolness of aviation sort of re-injected into your science, technology, engineering, and math brains. Fantastic. Um, incredible about the things about the workforce, and I do think that it is a challenge, you know, across the board about because there's very cool things, and uh, new entrants in careers have less of a cycle for career mm -hmm. fields. It's not a 20, 30 year career, maybe mm -hmm. it's a two, three, four, five. Sure. It's very hard to keep that interest sparked mm -hmm. when in aviation it takes a very long time to do right. things. So you can't see that. Yeah. You don't get those endorphins of success as right. quickly as you might someplace else. Yeah, yeah. So. so as we come up, uh, the, uh, the ATCA annual is coming up mm -hmm. in a couple months. Yep. Uh, uh, it is August, so it's uh, August and uh, it's at the end, towards the end of October. Yeah. Um, do you have plans? What what uh, what do you see happening there? It's going to be at the Washington Convention Center. Right. It'll be a new venue. Uh, what are your thoughts going into I, the annual? I'm super excited uh, about the annual. So this is my second year chairing the program planning committee, actually, and uh, the moving into the convention center after I think 10 years, I think is how long we were out at the Gaylord, uh, just provides almost a complete blank slate on how we think of the conference, how we think of the interaction, how we think of the way that the panels interact with one another, how we think of the way that the conversations interact with the exhibit hall and the industry. I, I think people are gonna have such, a, such an awesome opportunity to interact with the conference as a whole, um, the fact that we're all co-located in one place. And the program that we're putting together this year is, uh, is outstanding. It's uh, got a wonderful mix of uh, government and industry working at the same time. It's got a wonderful mix of technology, policy, and people type discussions. Uh, I feel very strongly uh, in line with the idea of kind of fostering our future workforce of having new voices on stage, right? So we're gonna have new conversations about new technologies. We're also gonna have some conversations that we actually do need to have every year. We just don't have to have the same people talking about them <laughs> every year, right? Yeah. So I have, this, I have this little corny belief, right, where uh, our industry will be better served if the people who are talking about it and defining what the future is going to look like are the ones who will actually still be working here when that future comes. And so we're trying to do a lot of that with the annual and looking at how the agenda is coming together and our speakers are coming together. I couldn't be more excited. Great. Well, I'm excited to see it. I know that the venue, we've been waiting for this venue for planning a number of years yeah. and just looking forward to a new part. And, that, and the new voices, I mean, I think ATCA has a hallmark of creating the debate and letting people talk, but those new voices. Um, what are some of the industries that you see that are impacting aviation that you see are going to be able to have influence on that dialogue that we're going to have? Uh, I, I think it's very interesting because we're starting to step outside of aviation, right? We've, we've taken great pride as an industry for years, right? You go back to, I think the first autopilot was, it's almost 100 years old, right? I mean, seriously, that's, that's, how, long, that's how long things like that have been going on. So our industry and the industries related to aviation have been the forward-leaning innovators, and of a lot of things for years. Stop you there. Sure. Her first autopilot, you think that was like a rope around the stick? So, and a... it, was, it was actually a, a gyro connected to some levers, and okay. there were ropes, Under and years, there were that's sticks. A long time. It's pretty close. That's a long time. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. All of a sudden, that, uh, um, I'm just thinking of the, but somebody, tied the, yeah. somebody tied the stick, and that's the first autopilot. Um, but, but even skip ahead a little bit from there, right? So the actual, what you would actually call an autopilot on the, on the flight deck of an aircraft, Aircraft was, has been doing autonomy for years and years and years, right? And it's not just drones, right? And so um, a lot of the rest of our society uh, and the social fabric w within which we work, work and live every day has been benefiting from things that aviation kind of invented. And so I'm thrilled that now, and, and, but with that, with aviation came a little bit of, well, if we didn't invent it, it must not be useful to us, right? They will not invent it here. <laughs> We're finally coming to the realization that that's not true, right? That's not uh, that's not a, a, a black mark anymore. In fact, not invented here is starting to mean. But can we use it anyway? It's starting to mean that should be something we should explore, right? Artificial intelligence, 
right? Not, not just in the mechanics of flight or the mechanics of air traffic control, but artificial intelligence on how we make decisions, right, uh, as an industry and, and how we build technologies. You have blockchain, these types of things that uh, the financial industry, right, for all the years that we talk about how unique we are in aviation and it's safety critical, but I'm fairly sure that the financial industry is a <laughs> relatively critical data-driven enterprise that aviation can continue to learn from, right? So the blockchains are out there. <laughs> Um, I hope so. I yeah. hope so. I mean, yeah, yeah. you look at bank accounts. I hope sure, so. Sure, sure. <laughs> and, uh, and agile development has been around for years, right? Since the original manifesto came out, um, it's been going on actually in aviation for a long time too. But the nature of the way that we build things, and the way that we approve and certify, and the regulatory and policy process around everything just takes so long that you almost defeat the purpose, even if you can get the value of Agile during development. And so <laughs> I, I'm thrilled that, that our industry is starting to recognize there's coolness out there that wasn't invented here. It's groups like ATCA, where we can all get together in a room and we can look at the technologies and the policy piece that's needed to get them in place and where are the people that are gonna work on it. So I'm, I, I love that ATCA is starting to take a forward lean there and I really hope I can help. Oh, hey, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Charlie. Best of luck on the run pleasure. of the board. Thanks Appreciate a lot. It. Appreciate Take care. it. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and hit the uh, bell button to get notified on our next video. Thanks a lot.